Hey, welcome or welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. However, what I do know, and if you've looked at the thumbnail, the title, and if you've read it in the description, you're going to know this too. This is my first impression review on Sea Colour Savannah Palette, which is a new company to my channel, mainly because the bloody shipping from America for them is ridiculous. But this is a dupe for the Natasha Denona Safari palette, which is one of her palettes that I really like the look of, but I am not paying $129 or 111 112 quid for a palette. <laughs> no, darling, if I'm paying that much money, you're going to be in my kitchen applying my makeup for me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, if you want to see exactly what this baby looks like and find out how easy or difficult it was to achieve this look, then my friend, you are in precisely the right place. Grab a drink. Grab a snack, put your feet up, and enjoy, because here it comes. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Right. I've seen an awful lot of US channels talk about a company called Sea Colour, who do dupes of high-end, high-cost palettes. Um, now I've, so far there's only one Natasha Denona palette that was really cool to me, apart from the bottom row of the Tropic palette, which she releases a mini that I bought. Um, and that was the Safari palette. And I've been looking for a decent dupe for that for quite a while. Now, Sea Colour's postage is bizarre because it starts off to the UK at about 13 bucks if you put one palette in, but then if you put a second palette in it goes up to 26 bucks and you're like, come on now, really? Um, but I'd got a, a discount code from Hot Mess Mama, which was Hot Mess 10, took 10% off, and I think I ordered this and the little brush set and it was still like 13, 13 quid so I'm like okay that's fair enough because the brush set I can pop into one of my, in I've got a box of things that I buy that I think right that can make a good Christmas present, that can make a good Christmas present so that's gone into the Christmas present box but this is their Savannah palette which is a dupe, has a mirror for the Natasha Denona Safari palette. Now obviously it's a lot smaller than the Natasha Denona palette but not being funny the amount of palettes I've got am I ever going to hit pan on anything? Probably not. <laughs> and if I hit pan on anything it's probably going to be my Hasina too because that's the one that I use the most. So I thought I'd give this a try. Now this is obviously done in like in the three rows you've got your sort of your grey greens up here you've got your neutrally going through to warm browns here and then you've got like your sort of more blush rosy mauve tones down here so let's get you zoomed in now this is still a teaching channel and as such that combined with my pain levels means that I don't blend very quickly at all. 
I also managed to poke myself in this eye earlier, so if this eye starts streaming and buggers up the makeup look, we'll just pretend this one doesn't. Oh no, I can't see my girl. We'll just pretend this one doesn't exist, and we'll just ignore. We'll, we'll just look at the blind eye instead. Okay? Yeah. Cool. Um, if I am going too slowly for you, there is a speed widget up there. Just speed me up. It's not a problem. It really isn't. That's what it's there for. Face is washed, moisturised, SPF'd and primed. This is the antiperspirant primer that I use. I've had some questions about this. I, I have got a film linked in my description box um, detailing the antiperspirant primer. There are times when I will put a second primer underneath. So if I'm having a day when my pores are particularly noticeable, I'll put a pore filling primer on those areas and then let that dry properly completely and then go over the top with the antiperspirant primer. Um, I know that seems an odd way to do it because you think surely you'd have to put the antiperspirant one on first, but I found if you put the antiperspirant one on first and then put a pore filler over the top, um, or a, a mattifying one or something like this. This is the Aldi version of the Smashbox one which is very silicone-y. Um, it peels up so you do have to use the antiperspirant one or at least that antiperspirant one last. But it does actually say on the front primer qualities and I can totally attest to that because usually I'll just have that on. I'll wash, moisturise, SPF, let it all dry and then bung that over the top, bobs your ankle and I'm, I'm ready to go. Right, let's get you zoomed in because I just want to talk through the two different eye types between deep set eyes, which I've got, and hooded eyes, which a lot of people with deep set eyes think they have or are mistakenly told they have. Because I'm going to teach you a workaround for each eye shape so you can follow any tutorial that you see on here or anywhere else for that matter. So. If you're one of my long-term viewers, you will have seen this before because I do this pretty much at the start of most of my videos now. Um, so just fast forward me until you see me wave um, a brush at you with colour on it and then you can press play. Right, let's get you zoomed in. I do come in a lot closer than most people do because I want you to be able to see exactly what I am doing. I think I've taken you a fraction too close. There we go, because you both my eyes properly now. Right. Now, when I relax my brows and look straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. Yes, I had some stubborn mascara that won't come off. Let's, let's not go there with that at the moment. So, I don't have hooded lids. It's only if your upper lid completely covers your mobile lid right down to the lash line that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. Now, I'm going to demo with this eye because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I can close it and still be sure that I'm still in focus and still in view. If I cover my visible mobile lid and close my eye, you can see I've got as much lid space again, if not more, that tucks back away. And if I cover the visible static lid and do the same thing, you can see I've got lid space there that folds back away as well. And it's those two parts of the lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting the crease, I can't just cut the socket, I have to cut onto the upper lid. And when wearing glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch just through there. Now, the eye primer that I've got on today is, as usual, my Crow and Pebble eye primer in shade Cotton, which looks like this. Um, literally all I do is get this brush, swirl it in, and then just apply it to my eye, like so. I had had some questions about how do I apply it, and uh, there's your answer. That's literally all I do. I don't put my finger in it at all because I don't 
don't want to introduce oils into the pot. Now, um, you can buy a half size pot, which would be this size, but only half filled. Um, they've, got, as said, they've got six shades, white is the lightest, they've got um, a beautiful deep chocolate brown and black at the other end of the spectrum and then three other skin tone shades in between so you're going to find something that will work for you. Uh, I haven't used another eye primer since I tried that. It goes on dry, it's not sticky, doesn't transfer back off again doesn't crease through my double, my, my deep set eyes which is crazy because most of them do um, and with this white one you get a true colour and you can blend on it straight away you don't need to set it with translucent powder so you get full impact of colour now the workarounds if you've got a hooded lid get a brush something like this or a pencil brush and just sketch out on your upper lid where you need your new crease to fall. Obviously that's going to reduce the space between your new crease and your brow so use smaller blending brushes than the person doing the tutorial. Um, if I'm doing an editorial look I'll go right up to my brows but I'll normally try and leave a bit of a gap between the colour and the brow. You may find if you've really not got much space here you may have to go up to the brow regardless. Now, if you've got deep set eyes like myself, all you have to do when you're blending a colour through the crease is stop, relax your brows and just check you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So you can see it's two different workarounds. So that's why it's important to know exactly which type of eye you have got. Right, brush wise, um, I've got listed in my description box brushes that I recommend and this is one of the sets from Aliexpress. They come in two different colour ways. They have beige handle with a rose gold ferrule, cream and grey tipped brushes, bristles, or they have this millennial pink with chrome ferrules and pink. So they didn't they had run out of the other colourways so I thought I'd grab this one just to see what they're like and I'm going in with tapered blending brush number six to begin with. Right this palette doesn't have any names so one, two, three, four, five, six to ten, eleven to fifteen. And I'm going to start off with, what's really annoying is that this had got like a little dink out of it and the powder had sort of scattered over it in transit. And I always like my palettes to look brand new as if I've never used them before because then I feel more inspired. If I see a dirty palette I just don't want to use it, I don't feel inspired by it. Um, and unfortunately this is the sort of white that stains. So deep joy. Right, I'm going to go into colour 4 to start with. Okay, these are quite dusty, similar to ABH shadows, but all I do is I tap back off into the actual, into the actual colour um, and then I can just pick that up next time round when I come in to do either the rest of the eye or the uh, the other eye. I really hope you couldn't hear next door's kids screaming. Right, if you are fast forwarding, now's the time to stop. Right, so, going in with this shade, this is uh, like a dove grey but with a hint of green. It's quite nice actually, almost like a William Morris green. So I'm going to start off by blending that at the top here and I'm going to build the colour up slowly. Now I'm doing circular movements going in this direction towards the nose, bounce a bit in the middle and then reverse the direction to come back out again. 
I hold the brush right at the end so I put as little pressure on my lid as possible because obviously the skin on your eyelids is the thinnest, most delicate skin on your body so do not pull it around. An example of why you shouldn't pull it around I really hope the swearing isn't being picked up on camera again is this eye was pulled around when I was five years old so we're talking 40 years ago now at the ophthalmic hospital and you can see the deep creases I've got there so don't pull your eyes around folks now to get more control over the area I've come a little bit further down the brush but that's simply because I want to make sure I don't go too high up here now obviously this is a very light colour but it is building up nicely because I'm not putting too much colour on the brush each time because I don't want to um, get too much fallout if I can help it. I mean I, I do my base afterwards anyway but that's not the point. But this is a really pretty colour and as I said I've been super tempted by the Safari palette but I'm not paying 129 bucks which is at the moment I think about 111, 112 quid when this C colour one was I think was it 8 quid? And then, or eight bucks rather, and then obviously the ten percent discount, so it came to seven dollars twenty. Okay, I then had the issue of postage on top and everything, um, but even so, it's still a damn sight cheaper than Natasha Denona's. I'm just sitting back and checking that I've got the same shape both sides because I'm not James Charles, I don't photoshop my results, I don't use any filters apart from very obvious snapchat filters um, so what you see is absolutely achievable I'm just checking that the shapes are the same both sides because sometimes you have to do a slightly different shape each side to make them look the same because your eye shapes are different. I know that sounds weird, just just trust me on this one. Um, I'm just gonna, I've got a clean washcloth here, I'm just gonna wipe any excess powder off of this before I go into the next colour. Now, which one do I want to go into? I think I'm gonna go into number five first, which is this gorgeous olive khaki green look at that, isn't that lovely? now I'm going to blend that a little bit lower down if you're concerned that I've got mascara here, don't be, I've literally just filmed a previous look and taken it off to film this one um, I am much more thorough. I would never go to bed with that amount of makeup still on my face. Which is possibly why I don't look 45. I've always, always taken my makeup off before I go to bed. Um, to the point I actually keep a packet of um, baby wet wipes upstairs beside my bed. Um, so that if I do forget, I can at least get the majority of it off with a wipe because my bathroom's downstairs. Um, and being disabled, being in a lot of pain, or just prior to me being disabled, maybe having had one too many sherbets and really not fancying getting back out of bed because I'm comfortable, I can at least take my makeup off with, um, you know, a baby wet wipe. just so that it's not on my skin overnight and then obviously I would double cleanse and deep cleanse the next morning that has blended in really nicely because greens are not the easiest of colours to do you regular viewers will know that if there's a green or a purple or a blue or a red in the palette I will normally use one of those to start with 
because they are the most difficult colours to create. So it's a good test of the palette and this is really going on nicely. I do struggle here and here on both eyes with um, dry patches on my eyelids which can sometimes affect how shadows blend over it. But this at the moment doesn't appear to be having any problem at all. I do get more fallout with this eye because I'm 45 years old, I've lost 14 stone. Um, so, you know, that's the eyelid moves, basically. But then I know 20 year olds who genetically have got quite loose eyelids. Um, so you don't just have to be old to suffer with this problem. But this circular movement that I do gently moves the skin around so that you cover all of it and you don't get any white patches. The only exception is over here with my deep creasing when sometimes I can still get um, a white tiger stripe effect. But what I normally do is once I've put the deepest colour on through my crease I will then check and if necessary I'll just hold the lid out gently and blend. Um, and if I'm doing shimmers I do have to hold the lid out otherwise the shimmer packs loosely into the crease. That's where there are a herd of elephants next door. Uh, it packs loosely into the crease and um, then through the day it will just cascade down my face as I'm talking and moving my eyes and stuff. Right okay I like that. I'm just going to clean this brush off. They've actually blended really nicely together. I like that a lot. You're never going to get it all out without actually doing a deep clean, but there's no more pigment coming off of it, so I know I can use this again if I need to. Right, let's grab uh, eye crease brush number 8, which is still rounded but more blunted on the top so I can control it more and it's whatever the width of the brush as you look down on it that's roughly the area it will blend out to so the smaller the tip the more control you have in the area that you're covering so that's so dusty um, I'm going to go in with uh, I think I think shade number two, which is like a very, very deep teal. Wow. That's, that's got some pigment to it. And I'm going to very gently buff this through my crease line. That's what I was meaning about just relaxing your brows and just checking you brought it up high enough that you can actually see it when you relax your brows, like so. You will eventually get to the stage where you will instinctively know and you won't have to keep checking. I'm just going to build a bit more colour up on this outer corner here. regular viewers will know with my fibro I get very watery eyes um, that combined with the fact that my hay fever this year has been off the charts I've suffered from right at the beginning of the year with the tree and grass pollen and then through the summer with the, the flower pollen and now I'm struggling again with the tree and the grass pollen so what I tend to do is just flick the deep crease shade up and out and you can see that gives you the same effect as doing a winged eyeliner. I'll tidy this up in a minute and show you how I do that. Um, it gives you the same effect as doing a winged eyeliner without actually having to do a winged eyeliner. So again, run this through the crease and just blend it out. I'm just gonna make sure I get the same kind of yep. 
As I said, this will be tidied up in just a moment with some micellar water and you'll see how I do that. This one's a little bit more patchy. But does blend. Let's just check. Yeah, I've got some tiger striping there. So I'm just going to grab a tiny little bit of extra pigment very quickly and very lightly just buff over that area as I said I always get more fallout on my left eye because it got pulled around so very very much when I was a child skin on that lid is much looser than the other eye, but that has dusted away quite nicely. Right, I've got a pad here with some micellar water on. And before I go in and do anything else, I'm just going to tidy up the outside edges. And you can see that gives you a really cool wing effect without actually having to wing it. Which, let's face it, it's pretty damn cool. Right, I'm going to go in with a little bit more of this shade too. Just on the very tip of the brush. Just bring it onto the outer third of my mobile lid. Just give it a tiny little buff just to deepen up that outer edge. Much easier to do when you can actually close your eye. Being blind in the other eye, if I close it this one, I'm going to be relying very much on muscle memory. And there's no guarantee I'll still be in frame. Now, this palette is all matte, which I don't have a problem with. Um, I actually quite like all matte looks, particularly in the autumn. I think they can look really, really impactful. And of course it then makes your highlighter shine up even more. So, I'm going to grab the medium shader brush number two, which looks like that. And I'm going to go into shade number three. which is like a greeny grey and I'm going to use this, I'm going to look into a little mirror down here so hopefully you can still see what I'm doing up there I'm just going to use this to fill in the two thirds of my lid that so far hasn't got any colour on now you can see it's very, very similar in colour to this teal, but it is just slightly different. It's just, it's more green grey than blue. Which is really pretty. I'm loving this look. I'm loving it, loving it, loving it. I'm loving it like this. Do you really like it? Is it, is it wicked? Am I showing my age now? Yes, I plenty well am. <clears throat> now, as I said with this eye, I do have to 
stretch the lid out otherwise the pigment shimmer or matte will just gather in the creases and then flake down my face during the day and pretty though it would look I'm not aiming for RAF blue freckles through the day but you can see although they're quite dark colours they do actually whisk away quite easily which is awesome if you are the sort of person who does your eyes first although I wouldn't recommend that to anybody um, because baking is not kind to you once you're over a certain age putting powder down to catch fallout is effectively the same as baking right I really like this look real grungy greeny grey really pretty so I'm going to pause you while I pop some foundation on etc and I will be back to finish off this eye look for you there will be no delay for me I'll see you the very next time I press the record button I am back right let's finish off this eye look Now I'm going in with this flat top brush and I'm going to go back into shade number two which is that deep teal and I'm going to connect it up and I'll run it along Okay, should have tapped that brush off underneath my lower lash line Mm. and the same hopefully without the fallout on this side <laughs> don't you just love it when that happens not Right, going in with this, this is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette and um, I love it because it's flat topped and it's chunky so it's great for getting under your lashes. So I'm going to go back in with shade number 4 which was the first one we started with. I'm going to use that just to soften that lower lash line which let's face it could do with some softening. Mental note. Shade number two, hella pigmented. Tap your brush off first, bomber. And then, obviously, blend this side out as well. I'm really liking it. I mean, I've only used the one row so far, minus the let's set my uh, eyeshadow primer, except I don't need to. So I know I've only used four out of the 15 shades, but the four that I've used, I really like. Mm. Okay then. And then I'm going to go in. This is a lip brush. I bought it from eBay probably oh, 10 years ago now, at least. And I'm going to go in with my one of my Fenty highlighters. This is uh, light, Lightning Dust and Fire Crystal. I'm going to start off with this one and then possibly top it with that one. This brush is perfect for getting up under your brow and 
and adding a little something something. Yes, my brows are kissing cousins today. They're not even sisters, let alone twins. What can I say? Clearly I'm having one of those days, folks. Right. In a corner. And regular viewers will know that I like to pull it along under my tear duct. And blend it in with the colours that I have run under my eye just because I think that finishes the look off nicely for my eye shape anyway if this doesn't suit you then you do whatever suits you but I happen to really like the effect that gives lovely Right, I'm going to pause you uh, one last time. I'm going to chuck some more of this highlight all over my face. I am going to put some mascara on. I'm going to choose a lippy. And I'll be back with my first impression, final thoughts. Once again, for you, my dear, this will be instant for me. Uh, five, ten minutes maybe. Depends on how long it takes me to choose a lippy. <laughs> See you right now. Uh, there we go, there's my final look. I bunged a combination of both highlighters on everywhere else to match the eyes. Mascara was my Catrice Glamondol Volume Mascara Waterproof, which is a dupe for Bad Gal Bang by Benefit, but it's waterproof and it's cheaper. Well, I believe Bad Gal Bang have now got a waterproof version, but I haven't tried that yet. And the Lippy is it's actually a Revolution lipstick but it is an absolute bang on dupe for Charlotte Tilbury's Pillow Talk and it is shade Prime. I like it so much I've actually got two backups of it in case I, I've already gone through one of these. Actually so now I only have one backup, I need to buy another backup because I think it, it's it goes with whatever look I do and it looks awesome. So, what do I think so far of this Savannah palette? As I said, I've only used this top four here. I really like them. Um, yes, shade number two took a little bit of finessing. There was a lot of fallout. It was a little bit patchy, but it did build up. Um, they're very dusty shades very similar to ABH in that respect so tap off well be careful don't do like I did forget to tap off fall out everywhere especially after you've done your base um, I'm really looking forward to trying the other two rows in this but I really like this sort of grungy greeny grey look and I think it's nice to have an all matte palette in these shades as well um, I've got quite a few of the Oh My Glitter palettes which are all shimmer and satins and duochromes, a lot of them. Um, so it's, this will pay, that will pay, they will pair awesomely with this. And then I can just pick a couple of shimmers out from one of those to pop on my lid. So yeah, I'm really, really happy with this so far. Extremely glad I bought it. And I can understand why the American channels rave about their quality so much. Uh, I am now super tempted into trying another one of theirs, um, but I don't know which one. The uh, blush, by the way, was an Anastasia. It was the Berry Adore Trio, and I used the middle shade Exotic. These are super pigmented, you barely need to dip in and then tap 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 and then blend. But I love that because it means they're going to last a long time which means it was a good investment. So, I really hope, my hair's gone so flat, man I hate that, all that somewhere. Clearly I need to go and get myself a coffee because my brain is now segueing into Shania Twain songs. 
which isn't necessarily a bad thing. If you're one of my regular 4F babies, please double check you're still subscribed as a YouTuber are still unsubscribing people. They took five people away from me the other day. I know this because I gained three but was still down two. <sighs> Isn't it lucky I don't do this for the numbers? However, if you have um, subscribed to my channel because you enjoy watching my films, even if I'm still appearing in your recommended videos, it's a good idea to check because you may have been unsubscribed and then eventually I will drop out of your recommended videos if you're not subscribed to me. Once you've done that, you know, it'd be awesome if you could give this a like and a comment because then maybe the YouTube algorithm will think, oh, perhaps more people might like to see this film and we can spread the 4F love throughout the beauty community. If, however, this is your first time here, hi, hello, welcome, I'm not always this scatty, sometimes I'm worse. Sometimes I'm better, but usually I'm worse. I really hope you've enjoyed this. If you've got this far through the film, I'm guessing you must have liked a little bit of it. So it would be awesome if you would like to join the 4F family by hitting that subscribe button and turning it from red to grey and then jumping through all the myriad of hoops that YouTube want you to jump through to get notifications. Gone are the days when you could just like a channel and they tell you when they put new content up. Yeah. Hm. There's your James Charles. I keep getting subscribed to James Charles and I keep unsubscribing from James Charles and then I'll suddenly find myself subscribed to him again. Stop removing my subscribers. But more importantly, don't subscribe me to channels I have no interest in. The boy built his career on a lie. I don't want to watch him. And on that note, Um, I do have other films you can watch if you are new here and you want to check out some more. Uh, not all of them end up with me ranting at YouTube, but actually no, I think probably a fair few of them do end up with me ranting at YouTube. Right, all that remains for me to say as ever is you'll stay fabulous and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.